Welcome dear learners. Today we will discuss about DNA as a genetic material. We will discuss the early discoveries and some experimental proofs of the genetic material. I am Sandeep Sangre, Assistant Professor in Department of Forensic Biology, Government Institute of Forensic Science, Aurangabad. Outline for today's topic is how investigators they identified DNA as the genetic material. Then we'll discuss the Griffiths experiment, MacLeod, Mac Avery, and McCarty's experiment, Hershey's experiment, and Watson and Crick's double helix model. There are four requirements for genetic material: it must carry genetic information, it must replicate, it must allow for information to change and it must govern the expression of the phenotypes back in 1869 frederick misher for the first time he extracted a weakly acidic phosphorus rich material from nuclei of human pus cell which he named as an nuclein we know that chromosome it contains dna and protein so if you compare this two biomolecules dna it has only four different subunits chromosome it contains lesser amount of dna than that of the protein in contrast proteins at least 20 standard amino acids they are present in a protein so there is a greater potential for variety of combinations and as we have discussed the chromosome it contains larger or greater amount of protein than that of the dna by weight the first experiment that we will discuss is the griffiths experiment that is transformation in 1928 he performed an experiment with two different strains of streptococcus pneumonia the causative agent of pneumonia these two strains were a strain smooth strain which is a virulent strain while the other one is the r strain which is a virulent strain the bacterial transformation here demonstrated the transfer of genetic material why we call this as a strain and r strain because of its appearance on the bacterial on a petri plate the bacterial colony on a petri plate so the smooth strain which is a virulent one it shows a smooth colonies because of presence of capsule the antigenic components they are resides in the capsule and they protect the cells as well as they induces or they have in it the antigenic properties while the r strain it lacks the capsule and its colony it appears rough on the surface of a petri plate griffith's experiment what he has done is he has taken the s strain the virulent one and injected in an mice when he saw what was the fate of that mice the mice died so it is a proof that the yes strain is an harmful strain it is a virulent strain it can be dreadful then he has used the r strain which is a mutant of yes strain which is a virulent or non virulent he has injected this r strain in an mice and the mice did not die this proves that r strain is non virulent it is an mild strain it do not causes death of that mice in his third experiment what he did what he did is he took the y yes strain and he heated it so he hit killed that strain and that leads to the formation of the cellular debris he collected all these components and he injected in the mice because of this heat treatment the cell it lacked the components which causes the infection thus the mice remain alive 
so in first and third what is the difference in case with the first set he has taken the live year strain when injected in and live mice the mice died because of infection while in third set what he did is he has collected the year strain he has hit killed it and then injected in and mice the mice survived in his fourth set he has done a combination of more than one experiment he has taken the heat kill components and he has mixed the live r which is non virulent strain he combined both of them and injected in an mice surprised to see the mice died when after the death of that mice he collected the sample and he analyzed the tissue he recovered the yes strain which were not injected in that mice so what has happened here is there was a transformation of this r strain into an y e strain so griffith was not sure about what was responsible for this transformation whether it was dna or whether it was protein or any other biomolecule but he has identified that the transformation has taken place and the mice has died because of pneumonia that is the transformation of r strain a virulent strain to virulent strain has taken place this is the puzzle of the molecule which carries the genetic information it continues this is bacterial transformation it implicates that the substance which carries the information they are genes but where the genes are present no one was sure So in 1944, Oxford Avery, Colin McLeod, and McCarthy they came to his support. They determined that it is the DNA which is responsible for that transformation, and they have proved it by using some experimental proofs, like the sample that they are Griffith has taken, the living R from. and the heat kill yes components when they were mixed together they were allowed to incubate and later on in an healthy mice in the mice which was injected it has died and from that mice the yes form was recovered so what was responsible for this transformation they were hunting so what they have done is they have taken uh, different types of enzymes and they have treated that enzyme with uh they have treated that combination with different enzymes so in the first set they have taken that combination and treated it the proteases proteases are enzymes which cleaves the protein components so the protein components were destroyed and then they introduced that this component the mixture into then live mice the transformation took place and the mice died of pneumonia and they recovered after the death after post mortem they recovered the yes strains of streptococcus pneumonia that is the transformation has taken place next they have taken the rna enzyme rnas are the enzymes which selectively cleaves the rna component again when this component or again this mixture when was introduced into the healthy mice the transformation still still took place and that mice died of pneumonia in the third experiment they have taken the dnas the enzyme which cleaves the dna specifically dna the dna got destroyed and when that mixture was introduced into an healthy mice the transformation did not take place and the mice it was having live r cells in it that is rough strains of streptococcus pneumonia were recovered from live mice then they have also ultra centrifugated and they have removed the fat components and then when introduced into an healthy mice they have formed the transformation that is in all these cases it indicated that the samples when treated with proteases rnas or lipases 
or any other physical or chemical analysis that indicated that the different molecules they are not responsible for transformation and the molecule which causes this transformation is none other than the dna so it was a convincing evidence that dna it carries the genetic information and was responsible for the transformation after this experiment even hershey and chase they have proposed an another experiment in 1952 alfred hershey and martha chase they provided the convincing evidence that dna is the genetic material this experiment is also known as the blunders experiment by using t2 bacteriophage and a bacteria so this t2 bacteriophage is a virus which infects a bacteria what they have done is they have radio labeled the components of virus so they have, as we know the dna it consists of phosphate in it so they have taken radio labeled phosphate p32 and labeled the dna and proteins they contain sulfur in it sulfur containing amino acids so obviously the proteins they were labeled with s35 that is radio labeled proteins when this virus was allowed to infect a host cell that is e coli cell it has completed its life cycle and that lytic life cycle when was completed the phage factory was produced and when this phage factory was produced it was seen that all these progeny phage they were containing the p32 labeled dna in them and not s35 labeled protein in them so we know that the dna or the genetic material is the only component that enters the host cell and the protein component it do not enter inside the cell it makes the coat proteins and other component but do not enter inside a cell so it was another convincing proof that it is the dna which carries genetic information and not the protein later on uh, the extra diffraction pattern produced by dna fibers the work done by rosalind franklin and morris wilkin so this plate number 51 the x-ray diffraction pattern it clearly indicates the structure of dna is double helix till that time it was known that the dna is made up of three different components one is the deoxyribose sugar deoxy because at two prime position there is it is lacking oh group while in case with the rna there is presence of this oh group so oxy and deoxy in case with the dna there is a lacking oh group at two prime position the second component is, is the phosphate group attached to the i dash end and the third component is the nitrogen base so they can be purine derived there are two different types of purine derived components in dna it can be adenine or it can be a guanine in case with pyrimidines there are two different pyrimidines that can be present in dna it can be a thymine or it can be a cytosine so the chemical composition of, of dna was known it consists of four nucleotides and joined together by phosphodiester bond that is 5 dash to 3 dash phosphodiester bond structurally the purines that is a and g they pairs best with the pyrimidines So that is t and c thus a it pairs best with the t and g it pairs best with the c so this pairing is also known as the chargaff pairing or we can call it as an base pairing when purine it pairs with the pyrimidine this particular combination is the perfect combination and it forms around 20 angstrom in diameter so this chargaff's rule as also known as the complementary base pairing rule what it suggests is the g it best pairs with the c and a it best pairs with t and vice versa so this a t and g c these are the complementary nucleotides in case with g and c there are three hydrogen bonds that can be formed 
while in case with a and t two hydrogen bonds are formed the watson and crick model the double helix model what they have proposed was the watson and crick double helix model in 1953 so in 1951 the watson they learn about the x-ray diffraction pattern which was projected by rosalyn franklin taking up the knowledge of the chemical structure of nucleotides that is the deoxyribose sugars the phosphate and the nitrogen bases considering the chargaff's rule which demonstrated that the ratio of a and t and g and c is always 1 is to 1 so they have identified all these values in 1953 for the first time they proposed the double helix model that is called as an double helix model of dna structure so this particular structure they have proposed in 1953 for which they have got the nobel prize so dna is double helix in nature two strands are anti parallel that is 5 dash to 3 dash moving in one direction the other strand is moving in 5 dash to 3 dash in opposite direction on outside are the pairs of base uh, are the phosphate group and on the interior side is the presence of the nitrogen bases as we know the phosphate group they are charged group they are polar in nature and they are they tend to remain on outer face while the nitrogen bases they are hydrophobic in nature and they are present internally inside the helix these two strands they wrap around each other once every 10.5 base pair so it forms an helix structure these two chains are held together by hydrogen bonds here we can see these dotted lines they are the small or weak bonds which holds this nitrogen bases together so this double helix may assume some alternate forms like b form z form c form etc for more details you can visit our next video in which this different forms have been explained in detail there are some dna molecules which may have circular dna instead of linear as in case with the prokaryotic cells the mitochondrial cells the chloroplast and some of the viruses some viruses may carry single stranded dna example the bacteriophages while some viruses may carry the rna as the genetic material which can be plus sense or which can be minus sense this is enough for today we'll stop here thank you